Welcome to the biblicalnutritionist.com. Today it's another Q&A Monday here on YouTube. I am so excited to share this time with you. I hope you have a nice cup of tea or some hot chocolate or some coffee and let's just sit down at the table and enjoy answering your questions. Today's questions are all about celebrating Jewish and Christmas festivities. Oh, this is such a fabulous question time. I can't wait to share it with you. So before we get started, let me just say, be sure and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and comment down below. Every time I, I have some questions for you, I would love to read your post. And also share this with your friends and your family and your church friends and your Bible study group. Together, we get to understand God's recipe for excellent health and to understand his number one ingredient, and that is his love for you. His love began at the moment of conception, actually before that, but we won't go into that. And he loves you still today, no matter what, he loves you today. That's the most important thing I can teach you. That's the most important thing that your cells can take in and get excited about. Because remember, I've shared, with you, I've shared this with you before, that every single cell in your body responds to the maker's name. God loves you. All right, let's get started. Question number one. What does celebrating the festivals look like? Is it an actual lamb sacrifice? And this was submitted by Laura. Okay, Laura, this is a really good question. Every festival taught in the Old Testament is a picture of what Christ is coming to do. As we celebrate these festivals as Christians, we get to reenact the times in the Old Testament while sharing the stories of how Christ came to fulfill each one and especially the spring festivals. They demonstrate his death, his resurrection as the first fruits, and his giving of the Holy Spirit. The fall festivals are in demonstrating of what is to come, what we are waiting to see happen, his return, his glorifying of the church. Now, as we teach our family about these festivals and even celebrate them as part of, as part of our own remembrance, we teach our children and our grandchildren why the Bible is the living word. It's not just stories of the past. It's a proclamation of God's love in the past, today, and for tomorrow, in the future. It shows how God continues to fulfill his promises to his chosen people, the Jews, and those grafted in, the Christians. Now, the more we teach our children and our grandchildren the truth of God's word and even celebrate the festivals, the more they will be able to treasure in their hearts the truth of God. Now, how much time do we spend teaching and celebrating Halloween? It's, my, it's the one holiday I despise the most. Our kids know all about Halloween. They look forward to it. Yet it's 100% pagan and satanic. Why wouldn't we teach our children about the celebrations of Jesus, the celebrations that Jesus experienced? Why wouldn't that have more meaning in our lives? It should. Now, I was taught in a church growing up that the festivals in the Old Testament were a Jewish thing, and we're not Jewish. Well, Jesus was Jewish, and I want to celebrate what he celebrated. I don't have to be Jewish to celebrate it. The more we know and understand about the Old Testament, the more we see Jesus as the fulfillment in the New Testament. Man is the one who divided the old and new. God didn't pause his story. It continues. And lamb sacrifice? No, there's no need because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. He was the perfect lamb without blemish, without sin. Thanks for asking this question. Question number two, I would love to see a video on ideas of how to celebrate Passover and Easter. Any ideas? This was submitted by Lavender's Blue Farm. Great question. Yes, in the spring, I share many emails about how to celebrate Passover. It is a joyous time with such a rich teaching and application. Now be watching this coming spring in 2021 and it will take place around March 27th as Passover. So stay tuned to this channel and I'll share recipe ideas, decorating tips, and how I celebrate. Now, I don't follow all the Jewish customs, but I love to read the story of the Exodus, share foods that are connected to the story or help me to share a point from the story, and then move into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. 
Now I have several videos out there about the Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread and much more. So be sure and check those out and learn from them. And I promise you there will be many more to come because I believe as Christians, we should be celebrating these festivals of our Lord. They're not quote Jewish festivals. They are festivals of our Lord. They were never called Jewish festivals. They were festivals of our Lord. Every festival is a remembrance of what God has done and what he's coming to do. So the more we celebrate, the more we get into our mind how God answers His, His pray, how, our prayers and how he answers his promises. So a lot to discover with that. Question number three, is Christmas biblical? This was submitted by Leon. Okay, this is a really good question. Is Christmas biblical? No, not at all. Can Christmas be spiritual? Yes. Hanukkah is biblical and spiritual. So for me to make Christmas spiritual, it starts with my mindset. How am I going to celebrate? What is important about the season that I want to teach my children and my grandchildren? So I contemplate to not celebrating Christmas and not putting up a tree, but my family revolted. They're very into Christmas. So to join hearts with my family, I now decorate my tree with nativity scenes from everywhere I travel. And then on Christmas or whenever we're celebrating Christmas, I'm starting this year especially to share stories from the Bible about Christmas. The story in Luke. And then at each part of the story, I have my grandchildren go and search the house for how many baby Jesuses I have, or how many angels I have, how many wise men I have. I will have them on towels in the kitchen, or decorations in the bathroom, or ornaments hung throughout my house, or angels hanging all over the place. Anytime I'm talking about an element of that story that I can have in a decoration or in an ornament, I have I'm hiding them all over the house. And they're not really hidden, they're on the tree. My tree has about 27 nativity scenes on it now. And they're ornaments, big and small, you know, all different sizes. But then the next thing I have them learn about is the cross. So what Jesus came as a baby to do, he fulfilled on the cross. And so now I am decorating with more crosses around my Christmas decorations as well. So is Christmas biblical? No. Is the story of Christ's birth biblical? Yes. Is, is it, can it be spiritual? Can Christmas be spiritual? Totally. It all starts in your heart. What's the most important reason for this season? How are you celebrating? How are you teaching your children what is truly accurate in God's word? They need to know Christmas is not in God's word. When children grow up, they go to college and the college professor says Christmas is not in the Bible, they're like, oh yes it is, but they can't find it. They need to understand Christmas is not biblical. Jesus' birth was outlined in the Gospels. It was prophesied in Isaiah. So we have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament proclaiming what is going to happen, when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen, and that all came to exactly being 100% correct. Okay, that's what our children need to know and they need to understand. But the word Christmas is not a biblical word. That's just a pagan word that we've adopted. So I hope this answers your question. And if you have more questions, please submit it so I can answer them as well. Number four, should Christians celebrate the Sabbath? This was submitted by Anne. Emphatically, yes. What God has declared, man is best served to enjoy and to obey. If working six days and then resting on the Sabbath was good for God, and then followed by Jesus, why wouldn't I want to celebrate it? Okay, so this is what we should do. We should celebrate the Sabbath. But I believe you might be asking me, should we celebrate on Saturday the true Sabbath? And my answer again is yes. Now, although culture sometimes dictates our desires, I believe a Friday evening to a Saturday evening is the true Sabbath. There is no changing in scripture to another day as the Lord's day. That's totally inaccurate um, theory. The Sabbath is as God declared. Now, how should I celebrate the Sabbath is another question. And I believe it should be with family, with friends, fellowship, and with worship. So whether you celebrate as a Saturday Sabbath or a Sunday Lord's Day, I believe work should be omitted. Now, how does that work in America? Well, I remember growing up when the blue law was being repealed in St. Louis, Missouri. So that's where I'm from. Prior to this repeal, most of the shoppers from St. Louis would go to Illinois, O'Fallon, Illinois, where the mall was. And the, the politicians from St. Louis like, look, 
all of the cars in the shopping mall in Illinois are from Missouri. We're losing on money. They're all about the money, okay? So they repealed the blue law, which said you couldn't shop on Sunday, and then all of a sudden stores started opening up on Sunday. Well, the blue law was put in by Christian principles that Sunday should be cherished. It should be a day off. Well, that's, this is where man starts interfering with what Christians should do and what they should not do. Man starts following man's laws instead of going back to what God has proclaimed for us to do. God has a plan for our life, and it's because He loves us. He knows we need rest. He declared the Sabbath as the day of rest. Now, in many Christians' lives, they turned it to the Lord's Supper on the Lord's Day on Sunday. It's not something to debate. It's not something to argue about. We just need to spend one day a week, one day a week in celebrating what God is doing in our life for that week, what he's going to do this coming week, and just to rest in him. Some people say we should work continually because we will rest when we get to heaven. No, we need to rest one day a week just as God did and just as he has instructed us to do. He knows us better than we know ourselves. So let's stick with him as our, as our trusted advisor and stop listening to man and so many ideas. I hope this has helped you a lot because celebrating the Sabbath is important. Thanks for asking these questions today, especially about the Sabbath and about Christmas and about the festivals. This is a topic I so enjoy because I feel like we've missed out on it for so many years while I was growing up. And now we get to enjoy what Christ has actually asked us to do, is to celebrate the same festivals that he did when he was on earth. I, I wish I could just invite all of you to my home and we would celebrate every festival here. I actually have the space. Maybe I should do that sometime. In the meantime, I look forward to reading your questions and answering them here. So if you have questions, please submit them right away. I would love to talk to you. And again, thanks for coming into my yard today and letting me share with you these answers. Um, just always remember this one thing. God loves you. It's the most important ingredient to his recipe for your excellent health. That health is about spiritual health, physical health, emotional health, and mental health. You were designed, you were created to understand and to be filled with God's love from the moment of conception. I'm Annette Reader from thebiblicalnutritionist.com. Always my joy to serve you, to keep you on mission. So share this with your friends, your family, and I can't wait to read your comments. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.